Okay, man, we got a fight. We got some fights this weekend. Gary Russell Jr. and Guillermo Rigondeau in action. Both in title fights, one in the 118-pound division. That's Guillermo Rigondeau. And one in the 126-pound division, that being Gary Russell Jr. And I think, quite honestly, they're both going to be in for tough fights. I have a feeling that this is a tough fight weekend. Let's talk about that in this video. Okay, man. Woo-wee. Looking forward to the little mans this weekend. The little mans, the little mans. The 118-pound championship for the WBA regular title between Solis and the great Guillermo El Chical Rigondiao. I do believe that's how you pronounce it, Rigondiao. But I'll, you know, do what Jim Lampley did and just say what I naturally rolls off my tongue, which is Guillermo Rigondiao. Um, so it's Guillermo El Chical Rigondiao and Solis and Gary Russell Jr., one of the longest reigning, but asterisk on that, inactive <laughs> champions in all of boxing. Uh, Mr. Gary Russell Jr. is fighting a guy that goes by uh, King Tut uh, Namanyar. I'm probably killing his name, but let me tell you, he's a good fighter. All right. He's a good fighter. This is not a fighter that it's like you should. This is not a uh, Oscar Escadon. This is not a... Um, Robinson Castellano, I know that guy's, I know he fights a lightweight, but, you know, just using names of guys, it's not that type of guy, man. This guy is not somebody that is fooled. He only has about 11 fights. I think he's got 11, 12 fights. He's been a little bit inactive, fighting only once a year for the last two years, but he is an Olympic, um, he's an Olympic silver medalist from Mongolia. A guy is a tough, I've seen him fight. He is not just a tough come forward fighter. This guy can box, man. And he's athletically talented. He's got quick hands. He's got good, he's got good, good power. And he's a, and he's a smart fighter. This fight right here for Gary Russell Jr. can be a difficult fight. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight and thinking to myself that, man, this is like, this is going to be good. And I do believe that it might be a better fight than than the fight with Jojo Diaz. I think that this kid might be have a little. I think he has a little few more wrinkles to his game than Jojo Diaz has. I think he's got a little bit of better hand speed. And um, from looking at the history of him and things that people have said about him, well, I'll put it that way. Putting it, looking at things that have been said about him while I was watching his other fights. We're just gonna call him King Tut. Watching King Tut's fight. King Tut's fight is that he has uh, a lot of success against Southpaws. The last fight that I saw him fight, which was against a South, uh, a um, Dominican Republic and a, a fighter from the Dominican Republic, who was a very was also I think we believe he was an also an undefeated fighter. This fight might have happened last. I think it was a fight last year. It might have been his la- last fight it was against a Southpaw and. It was a very quick guy, not of the skill level, not the skill level of the Gary Russell Jr. He didn't fight like Gary Russell Jr., but like Gary Russell Jr., he was a southpaw with fast hands. And King and King Tut seemed to have absolutely no issue whatsoever with um with fighting that southpaw. And in the commentary, they talked about how he had fought, he how he fought a lot of southpaws. Uh, I don't know if they if he's talking about in the amateur careers or if he's talking about his early professional fights, but he had that he's a good fighter against uh, against southpaws. So the simple fact that that uh, Gary Russell Jr. is a southpaw should not throw shouldn't should not throw him off. Now Gary Russell Jr. is is a special fighter, man, in that. Uh, King Tut has fast hands, but he does not have Gary Russell Jr. fast hands. Gary Russell Jr. got some quick hands, and unlike uh, unlike Tevin Farmer, he's got some pop with them on them hands. But then again, Tevin Farmer, I think Tevin Farmer's footwork is fast, and his and his and his reactions typically at at a point in time they were they seem pretty fast, but not in his last fight. So that might be a little bit off of a comparison. But anyway. Uh, uh, Gary Russell Jr. is in front of a guy that can they can really fight. 
So he's going to have to be on his P's and Q's. I wouldn't see he's not a this kid's dudes is not a big knockout puncher, but he definitely does go to the body. He'll start at the body and he'll end up at the head. He'll it's in a, he'll start at the head and end up at the body. Um, he also can fight on it. He can fight going backwards. He'll press the fight. He'll give you different. You know, I won't say it gives you a lot of different looks from what I've seen, but he's a very solid fighter. Now, I expect Gary Russell Jr. to win. But I would say for the people that want to see a good fight, that this PBC fight card is most certainly a good is most certainly the two fights that I know of. I'll go back and look. I'm not sure who else is going to be fighting. Uh, you know, who else is going to be fighting other than Guillermo Rigondeau? and gary russell jr but um man it should be good now and also the other thing about gary russell jr this fight i would hope i'm hoping would set up a win a fight and now this ain't you know see if bob what bob aaron wants to do this could if if this turns out to be a tough fight for gary russell jr it could actually wind up serving in the best interest of Gary Russell Jr. Similar to when the fight with uh, who looked kind of didn't look very bad. There was a fight that happened recently where a guy was like, oh, it was Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia versus, um, geez, whoever this dude just beat up, man. Anyway, Gary in Danny Garcia's last fight, Danny Garcia was like, Oh, against Ivan Redcash, the guy that bit him on the neck. Gary Russell Jr. said, uh, uh, excuse me, Danny Garcia said, oh, man, maybe I perform badly enough where these guys are going on to jump out there and fight me. Right. Because it because the fight went um, the fight, the fight went the distance. Danny looked like he slowed down a little bit towards, you know, Danny looked like he sw- slowed down a little bit towards the end. I, my personal belief is because the crazy ass dude bit him on the shoulder. So he's like, man, I ain't getting too close to this dude. This dude is nuts. I already won the fight. But he was hoping that that would would uh, create enough uh, confidence in the minds of other fighters that they're willing to jump in the ring with him. I think that possibly could could happen with Gary Russell Jr. And this guy, uh, King Tut, uh, Namanyar. If that happened, then maybe, um, maybe a certain dude named Andre Ward might get, might feel that, okay, great, great. Now let's make a unification fight with, uh, Shakur Stevenson. Now it's just been announced that Shakur Stevenson is going to fight Miguel Mariaga, which I think is a good fight because that fight with Miguel Mariaga is at 126 pounds. It's not, it's not at 130 pounds. Okay. It's at 126 pounds. Miguel Mariaga lost. He did lose a championship fight at 126 pounds, but then he went up and lost to uh, Lomachenko at 130 at 130 pounds. That was right before I do believe the Guillermo Rigondeaux. It was between the Lomachenko's fight with Sosa and his fight with Guillermo Rigondeaux. He had a defense against Miguel Mariaga, but Miguel Maria and Miguel Mariaga honestly boxed pretty well against Lomachenko until he quit. Right, and I got my own theories about that whole you know about that stuff but whatever it's all water under the bridge now but it might actually set that up it might set up a fight with Shakur Stevenson now the other fight that I'm looking forward to that I'm think is might be a tough fight and there's only one real reason why I think it might be a tough fight well two reasons one Guillermo Rigondeaux is older I guess I'm adding up the reasons Guillermo Rigondeaux is an older fighter now he's been an older fighter for a while man a great fighter man great fighter if it wasn't for don if it wasn't for bob aram and and hbo this guy should have definitely had a hall of fame career man definitely should have had a hall of fame career one of the best fight little dudes i've ever seen man this guy's power is bananas in that little weight weight class like when i said that king tut didn't really have a lot of power to hurt uh gary russell jr it's not like it i wouldn't say that about about um guillermo rigandale I believe Guillermo at 122 pounds, Guillermo Rigondeaux will break your jaw and he will stop you like he did in the last fight with a guy, um, uh, Seha. He fought Seha in his last fight that he had at 122 pounds. And there was a rough and tumble fight. They were exchanging punches and then yak, gone, (laughs) gone with a body shot, ugly body shot, dropped that dude. And that's a dude that took all kind of punishment from, from Brandon Figueroa. And, and Brandon Figueroa never stopped him. But Guillermo Rigondeaux, the thing that would worry me about this fight for Guillermo Rigondeaux is moving down in weight, 
right? Even though it's two pounds, even though it's just two pounds and it's, and he never really was a big one, 122 pounder, you know, just never know when fighters, when you move down in weight, how that, how that's going to affect you, man. If it might just, if he might feel a little drained and at that age, you don't want to, you don't want to feel drained, but he seems if he really does keep in excellent shape. Um, cause for years, all he really could do is train. So the simple fact that he was able to fight and make weight tells you that he's disciplined in in between fights. But that's my only worry for him. But I am looking forward to that. And because he really could be in the line to get if a, a big name fight because he's old enough and people might think he's vulnerable enough to let Monster Inouye get his to let Monster Inouye get his jaw broke out there <laughs> anyway. But it is what it is. Thank you guys so much. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Also, thank you to everybody that supports the channel um, through the Patreon, through the through the channel memberships, and through the live streams that we do Monday through Friday. You're much appreciated. Love, peace. I'm out. Also, I'll see you guys in a live stream uh, later today, and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>